The economic crash of 2008 plunged the world into recession, leaving little room for economic growth. The bailout of banks meant spending on social services was reduced worldwide. By 2012, the effects began to hit South Africa, and we started implementing a policy called fiscal consolidation, or austerity. But what is austerity? Austerity happens when government essentially decreases expenditure or increases taxes. And in South Africa, we've seen both. We've seen a decline in expenditure over time. And we've also seen, critically, the VAT increase in 2018 increase in tax that's regressive and regressive would mean tax that makes poorer people pay more is regressive um, is what is considered austerity for us. So austerity is an economic policy that specifically targets the poor and the working class. While companies might receive large bailouts under an austerity budget, social spending is cut and instead of taxing wealth, poorer households are forced to pay more for everyday goods. And in recent years, austerity has been presented as the only option for us in South Africa. South Africa got inspired by Western Europe. Their response was, let's allow the market more space, let's step back out of the economy, let's cut the expenditure, taking away important protection of worker rights. And through that, you are giving the space to the market and government step back and, uh, and hope that the economy will grow and then the benefits of this economic growth will trickle down to the unemployed and the poor. The problem is the private sector has not created decent new jobs and what economic growth has been achieved has not trickled down nor strengthened the economy and in the process the budget deficit the difference between money coming into the state and what it needs to spend has actually gotten worse. The very measures to deal with the problem is going to exacerbate the problem, make it more difficult, more pronounced. The way to deal with the problems of our economy, of the lack of employment, a sinful problem, the problem of deep inequality, the lack of services, the the fact that millions of people don't have houses, etc. That's where the potential solution lies because investment in providing for the needs of people will ensure that we are able to employ many people. Our government recently announced a budget that will introduce large cuts to public spending over a five-year period. This means cuts to health, education and social welfare. The aim, they say, is not to spend more money than they receive, but also to have a surplus, to pay off existing debt faster. It's not to say that when you have high levels of debt in a economy, that it's not a problem. No, it is a problem. The question is, what is the appropriate solution? So government has different bank accounts. So the current account is the one that they use to pay their debtors, right? The IMF, the World Bank, whoever it is that they've taken loans from. Currently, South Africa has close to one trillion rand in its current account, right? This is to show foreign direct investors, please come, you know, and I wanted to use the word screw us, but basically it's come and rape us as a country, come and exploit us further. Our working class are so desperate you can d dictate to the demands for, for working conditions because everybody is going to be saying a half a loaf is better than none. Over time, they assert control over state spending. Uh, you can't spend on this, on that, on that, on that, on that. Therefore, cut your spending. A large part of South Africa's economy is run by investors in the banking sector, in these exotic uh, financial instruments, hedge funds and bond and derivative markets. Their main concern is around issues of the scale of South Africa's debt, state of the finances of the 
uh, state-owned enterprises, the state of uh, local government debt, etc. Because they bet on the, on these things and they want to have a return. And so they are saying, well, the way in which we are going to secure our investment is to enforce government to reduce that budget deficit. It's in this context that we have the madness of a finance ministry which says, well, in three years' time we want to be in a budget surplus. 1997-2020, concerted effort to wither away our public sector. What we see in relation to SAA, what we see in Telcom, what we see in Prasa, in fact, every single public sector has been inundated with, with massive forms of privatization and it is purposeful, absolutely and utterly purposeful. Worldwide, gov uh, capital has uprooted public participation in the economy. With the transition in South Africa, more and more you have seen the state being uprooted in the economy. If it is not uprooted, you have seen productive assets of the state being destroyed or hollowed out. And instead of functioning as assets, more and more becoming a liability. 25 years after the end of apartheid, a better life for all has not been achieved, particularly for those dependent on social services. Unemployment has continued to rise, and social spending has decreased in real terms. Our population has grown, right? More people, more children, more women have needed these services, but the number of people who are servicing the people have either remained the same or have reduced. So austerity, when the government then decides to cut, like our government is currently doing, you must know that this is not just some theory. This is going to have such a practical and profound impact on the lives of the poor. Free education for the poor has improved access to schools in South Africa, but educators are worried that the quality of learning is declining. Our national norms say now we must have one educator for every 30 to 40 uh, students in a classroom. But when you have no numbers of teachers, you have to find that you're reversing that back to 50, 60. In fact, in some classes in the Eastern Cape, the number is back into the hundreds. The last time I checked, there were more than 50% of the teachers who want to leave the public schools because of these pressures, numbers, the infrastructure, no laboratories, no la libraries, no security, no clerks, no infrastructure, nothing. We have seen uh, a lot of education um, um, you know, services being reduced to be privatized and commercialized and therefore as an organization we are anti-austerity measures. South Africa has got a history of majority of the people being poor in this country and they can only rely on public service like public health and public schooling. If the government is going to implement those particular policies, basically we can kiss public goods, public services goodbye. Comrades! We know that our public health system has been collapsing and for years it did not begin with this pandemic. What this pandemic has done is to show that crisis and that is the reason that people are dying. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed just how unequal our society is. The need to spend more, not less, on public services has never been clearer Without a functioning health service and without social safety nets, how can we even hope to tackle this global pandemic? Some hundred days or so deep into the coronavirus pandemic, the Minister of Health was himself calling on the nurses' vacancies that were frozen to be unfrozen. You can see that now austerity was now coming into a direct collision with our development course and thereby impacting on our capacity to fight against COVID-19. A huge number of cancer patients now face death due to deteriorating public health system in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. 
You walk into any public sector health facility, whether it is a hospital, whether it's a clinic, the number of doctors to patients, the ratio is, is, is mad. You've got too many patients and too few doctors. Currently we have about 170,000 public health vacancies, which means really um, at a ward level for a nurse, you have to perform more than just your job. You actually have to perform two or three people's jobs. In fact, uh, during this year, because we had to go to the hospitals in the epicenter districts, uh, you know, Western Cape, Eastern Cape, Gauteng, uh, and KZN, we found nurses actually doing the job of the porters and feeding the patients and sometimes using their own money because they develop relationship with those workers, with those patients. So austerity is very, in a practical way, devastating on uh, the morale of workers, on give them a lot of work to do. They're exhausted, but also, you know, from a point of view of the community, it creates a very bad experience of uh, public service because they know that they have to wake up too early and wait in long queues. But also sometimes uh, you don't get the adequate attention from a doctor who's trying to deal with many patients. It's now how many people do you see permanent? What's the turnout rate, right? Because that's how they measure performance. Not on the quality of the service, not on the net number of people that were struggling or suffering from a particular illness. No, no. How many patients did you see for the day? So the quality of the service is no longer important. So when you cut expenditure in health, guess who the burden is displaced to to take care of those who are unwell? It is black women and it is black girls who do this work. International evidence has shown that women are the ones who bear the cost of austerity because they rely more on social services because they are the ones who provision the social care, right? The unpaid care work. When you're experiencing austerity or when you're struggling as the working class, you constantly hear that, you know, because there's no money, there has to be an increase in taxation. Government has to cut spending. The Val Dam is reported to be contaminated by sewage flowing into it from the Umfuleni Waste Water Works. And as the municipality looks into refurbishing the aging infrastructure, residents are stuck with the deadly unbearable stench. And when you start teasing out who's bearing the brunt, you start to realize that it's actually the working class, women, children, the unemployed, the elderly, who are having to tighten the belt. As we see this tightening or this forcing of the working class to tighten their belts, we find that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. The salaries of all public sector workers amount to one third of our total annual state expenditure. To reduce the budget deficit, the Minister of Finance announced a wage freeze for public sector workers for the coming years, despite an agreement in place that covered 2020. The, the decision not to honour the public service agreement on wage increases is very dangerous. Because what it does is that, remember the public service bargain, as a bargaining unit, does not cover, cover everybody in the beginning, in, in, in the public sector. It covers the lower strata of the workers. The higher strata is not covered and continues to enjoy increase. So members of parliament, the judges, the other people, the other high level people. So managers, directors, generals, all the people who, you know, are not covered by the collective bargaining agreement and, and higher than. The wages in that agreement are, no, are not affected. We see announcements that the, the, their wages will be adjusted, including leaders of opposition parties in parliament, that the, the, what they earn now will be adjusted. And then after the adjustment, they go out tomorrow, blah, 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 cut the public wage service deal. That's nonsense.
It should not be tolerated. The Minister of Finance will be putting his last nails on the coffins of the working class through the budget. And already he has told us that he's intending to cut a 300 billion rands from the budget. You know where he's cutting that? He won't extend the, the rear via bus services. We're going to be forced into the taxes. There will be no money to ensure that uh, they fix the damage where they allowed crooks to remove the entire rail system network in Gauteng. And uh, there will be no attention on the biggest, one of the biggest crises we're facing, the climate change uh, calamity. 24th of February is going to be absolutely critical to send out a message that says we have seen enough, we have heard enough, we are now heartful. We want that unity.